Hey everybody, this is Andrew Greer for CCM Magazine, and we are sitting down with the man of the hour for the band of the hour, John Foreman with Switchfoot. I'm so glad to have you here with us today uh, to talk about new record, new music, but also just get into uh, the content of what inspires music. We were just talking about your mom and your dad being musicians themselves, and you were saying your mom plays yeah. pipe organ, right? She was a pipe organ major, which feels like a pretty impractical major <laughs> yeah. these days. Um, yeah, and my dad grew up playing rock and roll, and so we always had guitars, and there's a piano, and you know, people ask, you know, when did you write your first song? And it's like, I have no idea. I mean, there's no such thing as a song when you're two, mm -hmm. you're just banging around, but I think those were probably the first melodies. So music was literally at your fingertips. Yeah, I mean, up. you know, pots and pans, guitars, pianos, it was all the same thing. Baby rattle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> In a takes. certain shaker little mode right yeah. there. Well, and we, you know, talking about music as like this language, you know, I grew up with music as well in the household. So many people grew up with music uh, really you know, fashioning their environment and influencing uh, not only just uh, the setting that they grow up in, but their emotions and and their relationships, not only with each other, but with God. So uh, I'd love just to hear from you first about how music as a universal language, and I feel like you guys as Switchfoot have really um, decidedly used music to be more than something for a certain niche or a certain sector, but to allow uh, the universality of that or the universalism of music really speak. Yeah, you know, um, I've always thought of music as the scaffolding for the soul. That it doesn't necessarily um, shape it. Um, it just allows you to get to places you'd never get to otherwise. You, you in, in a song, you can understand parts of yourself that have always been there, but maybe you couldn't quite f figure out how to get there, you know, and um, as a band, we've come to the conclusion that we sing these songs night after night because we believe hope deserves an anthem. And we want these songs to be opening the windows and the doors of the soul to be able to see a horizon bigger than just a mirror, you know. And I think so many times our society is, is uh, we're self-obsessed and we get locked in with devices and comparison to other humans mm -hmm. when there's a much larger story happening. I think music helps unlock that. You know, we uh, we actually did an interview maybe last year or a year before, and uh, you had this quote about music. Music often tells the truth quicker than words, which I think, you know, is, is what we're talking about here, how music has the ability within of it, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why it seems that seems literally that God has infused music with himself, this ability to um, speak things that we don't always know how to verbalize. How have you guys seen and used music uh, literally to, to do more um, in connecting people to each other and to God and connecting you to each other and, and to yourself? Um, how have you used music to do that, to supersede even what words can accomplish? Yeah, you know, I mean... I love the Judeo-Christian story of creation, of this deity speaking the universe into existence. And I wonder if it was sung. Um, I feel like any time we enunciate words, when they're not written down, we're, it's a singing of sorts. You could say, no, I'm just talking, but the pitch is changing mm -hmm. and Cadence. It's the cadence, there's a timing, there's a rhythm. I think maybe music precedes, you know, speech as far as our language is concerned, you know. And then you have Christ who, other than the, the time when he's writing in the dirt with a stick, you don't have any written words from Christ. You just have spoken words. And so, um, I don't know, for me as a musician, I, I think when I am singing, I feel like it's, it's kind of... Um, I always think of it as co-signing God's blank checks. That there's these, this currency that I've been given to, to operate with and just given to me notes and words and I can pay them however I want, you know. And um, so for us, we grew up playing in 
clubs and churches and frat parties and youth groups and coffee shops everywhere. And um, I didn't think it was strange. We just kind of, anywhere that would let us in, we'd play. I was in a Led Zeppelin cover band and <laughs> the youth group band. And I didn't see any problem <laughs> with any of it. So, uh, and my parents were very supportive. They they never said, oh, no, no, this is this mm -hmm. and this is this. Mm -hmm. And you can't, never the two should meet. And so I kind of grew up with that idea that, you know, tonight we're playing the bars and we're playing for hurting people that need love and need hope and need joy. And tomorrow morning we're playing at church and we're playing for hurting people that are looking for hope and love and acceptance. And um, so for us, I think that's kind of been what we've been doing all along is just trying to tell the truth, just trying to tell our story. Because I think that um, that's the story I've been authorized to tell. I have a friend, an author friend who says that is always uh, that it sometimes feels risky to share a story, but it's always safe to share a story because that is what God has allowed us to experience. And when we give that story over, surrender that story to to work and move in the way it can, what she says that God can mercy that story uh, to then be a gift to other people for their own shame, for their own pain, for their own hurt, so that the shameful and painful part of our stories are not to be discounted. And that's what I heard a lot when I was reading the background of where the light shines through and, and what you talked about, there's a quote I loved. It said, um, strange to make a record of light out of a really dark year. And we often see that as a contrast, darkness, light, heartache, hope, you know, um, we see death and life where in actuality, perhaps darkness and doubt are a gateway to light. So I'd love just to hear you expound on how, again, this year of darkness, I had the potential to create a batch of songs that are light. Yeah, I, I still don't know exactly how it happened, but it, it did happen like that. And um, hearing you talk about it, I was literally just texting with a friend of mine about his story, because I've been encouraging him to tell his story. And um, and it is that, it's, it's where the moment you, you say the most personal thing that you're, you've always been afraid to talk about. Um, suddenly, you put that into a song or, or, you know, into words, and and there's a resonance that someone else has. You know, um, failure, doubt, pain, insecurity, fear. These are words that we are attached to things that we hide, and we build up like a. For me, I was realizing I was building it like this Berlin Wall that was like dividing myself um, into two sides and um, so uh, I, I basically with with this record I, I kind of decided okay let's 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 get it out there let's start talking about it mm -hmm. and um, so at some point as we were I was trying to face up to the darkness so I, I every night after the after we be in the studio till one or two or three or whatever it was. I'd go to this one rock on the on the beach. Um, the Pacific Ocean is a good place to wrestle with the darkness at three in the morning, you know. <laughs> and I I would be out there and and um, it felt like as I was uh, out there wrestling with it, it felt like light began to break through, and that's that for me was where the title track kind of gained its power and meaning um you know the wound is where the light shines through it felt like this realization that um often the the first step towards healing is acknowledging that there is something wrong and then um, for me that meant singing about it and uh so that's what the that's kind of where the record came from there's a, you know, I think about in, in our pain, in our hurt, and discouragement, and why that is, is such an important thing to share. I think of from a spiritual perspective, and, and again, I, I believe us as spiritual people, so that we're all kind of searching for home through um, the spiritual search, but that pain is, is a pathway uh, to discovering uh, God. And there's a translation, a newer translation, 
uh, of the Bible called the voice, and I think it's Isaiah 53 or something, where, you know, man of sorrows, it refers to Jesus as man of sorrows. In this translation, it refers to Jesus as grief's patient friend. Hmm. And so this idea that perhaps even the one we look to the you know, in, in these circles of church culture and a place where where it seems like we have a certain expectation, cultural expectation to be happy people, um, to not necessarily uh, divulge certain information because that would make us look less imperfect and maybe that would then reflect on God as less imperfect. Then to have this um, this descriptor of Jesus, the one, the one that we're most uh, searching after as grief's patient friend, do you feel like grief, pain, this darkness, you know, is perhaps, for you, has it been a gateway? Has it been a pathway uh, to experiencing God, your spiritual relationship, your spiritual search? Has it helped line that path in a way that either maybe you didn't expect or that you weren't open to at first and then discovered it? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, in talking about that, that Berlin Wall and the parts of my life that I... I wish hadn't happened the parts that that the questions the pains the doubts all those things that you kind of you shove onto that side and try and live in this side um i think that you're when when i was doing that it was it it creates this this schism this duality that that isn't healthy or normal and and it basically is disbelief because it believes in a God that's not big enough to encompass all of that. Um, it's, uh, he's not big enough for the big questions. He's not actually big enough to, to get underneath the wound and actually heal it. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I think that is a, that, that's a, you know, the, the, the practice of confession, I think, is a beautiful thing because it says, I'm fatally flawed. I am a sinner. I blew it again. This is, you know, I feel like that's such a healthy thing to say. <laughs> I don't have it figured out. I'm, you know, and um, depression, failure, fear, um, to bring these things to the surface is liberating. And that which is, hid is hidden is empowered. And so you're actually... For me, I realized I was empowering my doubt, empowering my fear, empowering mm -hmm. the pain, you know? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so absolutely. I mean, I think that the, you know, not only does the healer of souls want to heal the wounds within us, but sometimes those are the very places that he wants to shine through and, and actually enlighten the rest of our world through and I think of even um the way that he uh you know I think of the cross I mean for me the title the wound is where the light shines through yes shining through my own wounds shining through the wounds of my community you know like the the questions that I have about America our interaction with Iraq um poverty around the world I feel like that's those are the places where I I see the most wound <laughs> that I can imagine. And, and yet I see such light when, when I look into the, the eyes of these kids. Um, and then the third place, I think the wound, I think the, 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 where the light shines through, I think of, you know, uh, the crucified savior on the cross, like the wound itself, you know, and, and light shining through that. You know, for me, I, I absolutely feel like the wound is a place that is meant to enlighten us about our humanity.